see the blog sites. Whoopie whoop got a new wife. Shorty got a new boo. Yeah, love beautiful, but love, 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 love. gotta be the right one. So we arrive in Dallas, and I have to do the exact same thing I did last time, which is get a car straight to Kid Craddock. Kid Craddock is the local radio station. I did their whole show and we talked all about love and relationships. If you talk about what matters to you, you'll have no problem talking. The problem is that people will think it's their job to talk about things that don't matter to them on a date. And that's when they'll run out of things to say because they're trying to fabricate interest. But the highlight, of course, was my mum arriving. Mama, <laughs> to make you cry. I decided I wanted to fly my mum out to Dallas to be with us for a few days. Why did you fly her out? I flew her out because we, I always, I, I don't think you get enough time in life with the people you love. And um, you can't wait for perfect moments. You have to make those moments and steal them in times that you can find. Um, so I feel like everyone waits for that week-long holiday they can have with everyone they care about. And instead I steal them wherever I can. So I had a bit of an idea, Mum, mm -hmm. because you're obviously a hit with the ladies <laughs> wherever we go. So you know the first time we did Love the Journey, it was kind of just us travelling around? Yeah. This time we did it so that we were actually talking to the women in each city. Mm -hmm. I think you should be the person that goes out there and actually finds the people and brings them back. Because you're going to be the most charming. And they'll, they'll think you're sort of innocent and non-threatening, won't they? I am. Hi ladies, I'm Matt's mum, I'm Pauline, oh, hi. Hi. lovely to meet you. Matt's doing a, a project at the moment with Jameson, his cameraman, and he's backstage and he, everywhere he goes he's doing an interview with women to just see what they feel about dating in that region where they come from. I wonder if any of you would like to come back and meet Matthew and just be on camera while he asks you a few questions about dating in Dallas. Would that be okay? Would you all like to come? Yes. <laughs> Want to come? <laughs> I'm actually looking to you for information here, so I feel like you're the ones that I need to ask the questions on. I'm so happy to see you on this Saturday. Thank you so much for coming out to see me. I appreciate it more than you know. I'm excited to be doing this with you today. Before I came in to this room here, before I approached the stage, I had the wonderful privilege of talking to four or five, uh, or five or six, I should say, women backstage who we kind of selected at random and just said, do you want to come and have a chat uh, and talk about dating in Texas? Uh, I like to know a bit of the local flavor. I like to understand where I am uh, so that what I do is not simply generic, but I can begin to understand some of the issues. And it was really wonderful and fascinating it reminded me of the shit you guys have to deal with. <laughs> what is the stereotypical Texas man? I'd like to know that. <laughs> well, I mean, boy. I'm only 23, but I've noticed that they're not very mature, mm -hmm. is what I've noticed. It's like a really big thing. Like and mature in what sense? What, what's the, what are the signs of immaturity? More looking for the woman to take care of them. Mm -hmm. Then, yes, um, then, know how to then, treat them then, then to step up their game and be more of a partner or a helpmate. Right. Yes. But more yeah. of you being able to bring them up mm -hmm. and bring them up to speed and be a helpmate yeah. to them. In yeah. what yeah. ways yeah. do you think? Um, Job-wise, um, status-wise, I think in, 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 in all ways. So they want a lot. It, they yeah. don't want to give a lot, but they yeah. want a lot. Yeah. 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 And how does that manifest in terms of how much of your, how they want you to come to them instead of mm -hmm. you having to go to yeah. them. Yeah. They, don't else? Drop, they don't drop me off at the doorstep anymore. They want me to go to their house yeah. um, mm -hmm. constantly. I, they never come to my house. Always talking about all, you know, meeting their needs met, whether it's sexual or just emotional or just mm -hmm. meeting career wise. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, mm -hmm. I would have to compromise my goals in order mm -hmm. to meet his needs the way that he wants me to. And even just something as simple as talking to those few wonderful ladies I just talked to reminded me why I do this. Um, my best friend in the world is my mum. Mum, are you there? She's right there in the corner. Um, yeah. 
And um, I know that if my mum were sitting there right now, having perhaps just come out of a relationship, perhaps been single for a long time, perhaps looking for connection, or trying to figure out where she should be getting that connection or in what ways, if she were in this room uh, in somebody else's hands for a day, I would want them to look after her and treat her with enormous respect and give her the best advice possible and not say things for effect, but because they truly could help. My personal thought is that people have lost the art of dating mm -hmm. and then they just, just want to go out and and they just don't take time to meet each other and go to the courting phase and the dating phase anymore. And when you meet people, they don't want to do that dance with you. Mm. If there is one thing I have learned about what it is to take control in our love lives, it is this. We start by thinking of all of the things that we want the license to ask of our future partner, and then we work on being all of those things ourselves. What license do I want to say to my partner, this is my standard, I need it to be yours too. What do we want those standards to be? And then starting today, we better begin working on being those things. Do you need to be every single one of them at the highest level to attract an extraordinary partner? No, because we are a work in progress. But in order to begin to attract the people we want to attract, we better start by playing at the same standard we're asking for. Here it's like you kind of have to work more to really get into that circle, to really get mm. to know people. It's like people are a little bit more kind of wanting to feel you out. What we put into the world in at a level that is significant, we will have reciprocated. So I'm with my mum in San Diego on the retreat. We have a couple of hundred women who have come to work with us for five days. And my mum is talking to a bunch of people that are from New York. And these women say to my mum, I'm so sorry for how cold the people are in New York. And my mum said, people in New York cold. She said, that's not what I've had. And they looked at her like she was an alien. All right? And she said, I, she said, I, I found people in New York to be so warm and welcoming. I think they're fantastic. I'll tell you why that is. We'll be in a shop. My mum will be buying a pair of shoes or a bag or something. She'll be at the counter opposite a person who's dead in the face because no one has said a human word to them all day. And then she'll look at them and she'll go, I'm on holiday. <laughs> and you see this person suddenly wake up out of their coma. And they look at her and they go, you are? Oh, where are you from? She'll go, London. And they'll go, that's amazing. She'll go, yeah, I just, I'm having such a good time here. And they'll be like, oh my God, that's so great. What have you done? She'll start having a conversation with them. She'll be like, people in New York are so nice. But that's not everybody else's experience that day of that individual. So she goes in like that. You want people to flirt with you more? Flirt with people more. You want people to smile more? Smile at them more. You want people to create more sexual tension with you and tease you more? Tease them more. You want people to be more genuine and vulnerable with you? Open up and tell them some vulnerable shit about you. So what did you think of the people in Dallas, Mum? I thought they was absolutely great. They were so friendly. I was really surprised that... Why were you surprised? Because I thought we'd be in a city, it would have lost its charm and the people would be rushing around, but they're still so friendly and laid back. Every time I've been to Dallas, I've always found them to be so lovely and so engaged, like they want to have conversations with you. Yeah. And yet, when we were talking to the group of women before the event, what's so funny is that they had so many of the same complaints mm. as everywhere else. See, part of me thinks we see the superficial side of it, where we walk around and we're like, we're all romantic about it because the people here have to live here every day and experience those people every day. And then the more optimistic side of me thinks, well, maybe the challenge for all of us where we live is to go back 
to seeing it with more romantic eyes. Okay, you and I are going to New York mm -hmm. right now. Jameson, you're going back to LA. So let's make it our mission for the next week to be really romantic about the places we're in and fall in love with them as if we'd just moved there. Yeah, because I really did fall in love with Ellen. And for all the people at home, they can, wherever you live right now, make it your mission just for the next seven days to fall in love with the place that you live in, even if you've lived there your whole life. Fall in love with it all over again. I see the vlog sites. Whoopie whoop got a new wife. Shorty got a new boo. Yeah, love, beauty for love, 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 love. I'm happy being single. I wish that I could find you.